So now I'm just going to weld one tiny piece of sheet metal from there to there and it's done. On today's episode of Function Beast, we're going to be hacking up an S14. this problem it will just be a weird one you know I may have to do like several odd shaped plates um, but that's fine <laughs> I'll give you a look at that stuff. There's a, uh, some of it is sheet metal, some of it is a strut tower from another vehicle. There's a bunch of patch pieces. There was much more rust in the engine bay than I had thought, uh, which also includes the frame rails on the outside. Uh, my next mission now is to clearance the firewall. Well, I'm pretty sure that is the transmission tunnel uh, hammering finished. Uh, if not, I can always hammer it more later, but for right now, I think that's a job well done. As you can tell by my horribly ridiculous amount of sweat, it was very difficult. Um, and yeah, let me go over while I'm, while I'm sitting in the engine bay. Let's go over what was replaced rust-wise. So here on the passenger side, on the top of the strut tower, you have this little filler plate right here. Uh, there was a small piece of rust there. On the bottom, as it turns out, the uh, strut tower was separating from the frame rail. So I uh, rust proofed it and I gave it this little filler piece here. I don't know how good the lighting is, but we'll see. And, uh, Turn to the driver's side here, which is the much worse side. Uh, I've made a few filler pieces up there. This entire new, this entire strut tower is new. It has, uh, I don't know, it's from another S14. Uh, it's welded front, back, and then there's a few sheet metal filler pieces here or there. Uh, what you don't see is on the back side where the wheels are, both frame rails were also rotted out, and I had to fix those too. So. Pretty sure that's the engine bay stuff. 
Uh, it's ready to be power washed right now. And then I'll, you know, be ready to prime and paint it after the power washing. All right, now I suspect I'm gonna have to do this power washing probably three or four times. We'll see what happens. Anyway, check it out. Gonna... And now we're getting to soap number two. And rinse number two. And you guessed it, three times the charm. So, what I just finished doing was the uh, long, annoying, and painful process of seam sealing the parts of the engine bay that I welded, that you know were cut out for rust. So if you could not, in the last couple shots, see what was welded, this will make it very obvious. Um, so basically what this is, is on all the seams of everything that I replaced, uh, there's a rubber, you know, sealing liquid to just make sure that it's waterproof stuff like that once primer and paint goes over it it won't be as jarring as it looks now so i'll let this dry overnight and then tomorrow uh i'll prime it and paint it maybe we'll we'll see what happens okay i decided to do one teensy weensy thing uh this evening one one last thing uh i'm going to take this S13 radiator that I have right here. And uh, I'm gonna fit it into the car. I'm gonna mark it and I will explain all of that stuff uh, as I'm doing. So now, the main difference, so the main difference between an S13 radiator and an S14 radiator are its mounting points. You see here on the S13, it mounts here. Whereas on the S14, it mounts there. So one goes to the outside of the radiator, one on the inside. Um, what I want to do is cut one inch, uh, I want to cut one inch out of this front radiator support, uh, so that, so that I can move the radiator forward in the engine bay, if I can get it in there, so I can move it forward in the engine bay to help clear electric fans, accessories, stuff like that. So. That is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mark it out right now, um, but I won't cut it and stuff till tomorrow. But so, um, so these little bumps here that you see in the radiator are about one inch in. You see that? So I'm going to uh, I'm going to use them as my marks and just cut straight across to the width of the radiator on either side. Alright, I'm going to start back here and work my way forward. Oh, that's bad immediately bad well that was bad um i don't know why but the primer had an immediate horrible reaction to this entire car so um i'm gonna let that dry for like five minutes and then i'm gonna put another coat on and then see how that goes all right second coat of primer is on it's coming out bad real bad so Still stuff like that. Firewall looks like garbage. You know, it's it's everywhere. This is uh 
The, it's, it's having a reaction of some kind and I can't solve it. I'm not a painter. I don't get I'm just gonna keep pushing through it. Here's a little bit of an update. Um, I've switched to Rust-Oleum self-etching primer, which I've used before. Uh, it's a uh, trusted component for me. And uh, yeah, it is priming this thing no problem. So I don't know why the other thing was an issue. And it was at this point that he ran out of the new primer. <laughs> I just finished spraying color on top of the primer. I think it looks pretty good so far. And now clear coat. Stage one of clear coating is complete. It's uh, everything looks great except for the battery tray, which looks disgusting because that's how they look. Okay, live with that. All right, so that is five coats of primer, which is ridiculous. Um, zero sanding, uh, two coats of color, and two coats of clear. And this is what we've ended up with. Now, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's come out um, pretty okay. Nothing, you know, nothing crazy, nothing to write home about, but it's all one color and it's color matched to the body. So I think it's good. We did have a couple little spots of reaction. Uh, one is over here, one's back there, but I mean, pretty, pretty small. I'm not so much worried about those little spots, you know. I can uh, either touch it up later or not care at all, which is the option I'm gonna go with.